Okay, so here we are with Alfred's Essentials of Music Theory Unit 8 Review. This is the review for lessons 31 through 34 on page 55. Okay, so we're just going to get right into it. What is the complete order of sharps in a key signature? Um, just remember uh, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And the way I remember that is just like the book says, fat cats go down alleys eating bread. It's a good way to remember it. Don't forget it. Okay, name the following major key signatures. Okay, we have four sharps here, so that's going to be E major. Now, I just have that memorized, but remember, what you can do if you don't have your key signatures memorized is take the very last sharp, which is here on D sharp, and go up a half step to E. And that's how you figure out sharps. So last sharp, go up a half step. Let's try that method for B. So we've got F sharp here in the key signature. Go up a half step from F sharp. Your key is G. Here we go. C sharp is your last sharp. Go up a half step. This is the key of D. Or you can just memorize it based on your circle of fifths. If you have your uh, key signatures memorized, this is a lot easier. Three sharps. I have it memorized so I know it's A. But if for some reason I forgot, again, I could just go to um, the third sharp, which is G. So it's a G sharp going up to an A. All right. Write the following key signatures. Okay. So we're going to do A major. Remember, Follow your order of sharps. Fat cats go. So A major is three sharps. Fat cats go. So there's our three sharps. Boom. G major. Again, I just have this memorized, so I only have one sharp. So that's going to be F sharp. Now, if you didn't have that memorized, you'd have to go through your circle of fifths, right? So you'd think C is your zero sharp, zero flat key. Um, go up a fifth from there, C, D, E, F, G, that's your fifth is your one sharp key, right? So if you go up a fifth from your zero sharp key, you get your one sharp key. If you went up a fifth from your one sharp key, which is G, G, A, B, C, D, that's going to be your two sharp key, okay? Hope that makes sense. E major, okay. So I know just from memorizing that's four sharps, but again, you could use your circle of fists. F sharp, so fat cats go down. There we go. Next one is D major. That's gonna be fat cats, two sharps. So there you go. What is the complete order of flats in a key signature. Now, one way you could do this is just look at your sharps backwards. That's what it is. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. I like to remember this as bead, like the word bead, and then greatest common factor. That's just how I remember it. Name the following major key signatures. Now, I have these memorized again, but if you don't, go to your second to last flat and uh, that's the name of your key signature. So the second to last flat here is B. So it's going to be B flat. Second to last flat here is A. So this key signature is going to be A flat, right? Second to last flat here, uh-oh, there's only one flat. So what do we do? This one you just kind of have to have memorized. So one flat's going to be F, okay? Or you could use your circle of fifths again. Remember, for flat keys, you can either go up a fourth from your zero flat key, which is C, right? C is has no sharps or flats. So you could go up a fourth in there, C, D, E, F, and that's your one flat key. Or if you want to descend by a fifth, which would be C, B, A, G, F. So that's going to be, so if you descend by a fifth, you get your flat keys, or if you ascend by a fourth, you get your, your order of flat keys. All right, three flats. I just know that's E flat, but you could use the second to last flat rule. Okay, write the following key signatures. E flat major, um, and I know it's three flats, so follow your bead greatest common factor. B, E, A, there you go. B flat major, I know that's two flats, follow your bead greatest common factor, B, E. There we go. F major, um, again, this is one you just kind of have to have memorized. Know that it's one flat and that it's B flat. 
A flat major. I know that's four flats. Um, you should have it memorized by now. B, E, A, D for bead, greatest common factor. You either have it memorized or, again, you could use your circle of fifths. Go up a fourth from C. C, D, E, F. That's your one flat. Go up a fourth from F. Um, F, G, A, B flat. Okay, so then it's going to be B flat for your two flat keys. B flat, C, D, E flat. So E flat's going to be your three flat key. Go up a fourth from there. E flat, F, G, A flat. That's your four flat key signature, which is right here. So you could use that go up a fourth. I prefer that to going down a fifth. Okay. Reference your circle of fifths. I believe it's on, it's like, couple of pages before this one, two or three pages before. So reference your circle of fifths. Um, and you should have this book. If you don't have this book, don't even watch this video. Go out and do the work on your own. All right. And now for the second half of the page. I've already got a little bit of it done just to save some time. The C flat major scale sounds the same as which other major scale? And that's going to be B. So what they're asking about here are your enharmonic scales. If you remember, your enharmonic scales are the scales that sound the same but are named differently. Okay, so C flat, if you think about your keyboard, is the same as B. The G flat major scale sounds the same as which other major scale? That's going to be F sharp. Look at a keyboard if this doesn't make sense and it will help. Number nine, the D flat major scale sounds the same as which other major scale? C sharp. Okay, so again, highly recommend referencing your keyboard if that doesn't make sense. And harmonics, remember the word. Number 10, the chromatic scale is made up entirely of half steps in consecutive order. Um, and here we go, we're going to name these melodic intervals for number 11. Okay, remember, melodic intervals, it just means that they're not played at the same time, right? A harmonic interval, which we'll get to. Uh, on the next one is when they are played at the same time. So here we go. This is going to be a fourth. And I can kind of tell just by looking at it because I've got some experience with this. But if you if you remember, um, so this one's on a line and this one's on a space, okay? So when you have a line and a space, um, that's going to be an even number interval. When you have a line and a line, like um, for for example here, or a space in a space for here, that's going to be an odd number interval, right? So automatically, if it's on a line in a space, you know it's going to be a second, fourth, sixth, or an octave. And automatically, if it's on a line in a line or a space in a space, you know it's going to be a, a third, fifth, or a seventh. Okay, so that kind of helps you visually think about it. So here we go. We know that's even because it's line space. So we're going to call that a second. Here, it's line space. So we're going to call that an octave, or I guess P8 is how they like it in this book. So perfect octave. Or you could just write out octave, whatever you prefer. Okay, the next one, that's going to be a fifth. Okay, and for this one, we can call that a unison. All right? For this one, it's going to be a third, because look at it space to space. For this one, we got space to space again. It's big jump, so that's going to be a seventh. I can just tell by looking at it. But if you can't tell just by looking at it, like if you're still kind of new to this, you can always just count, right? So you start on the note, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? You got to count line, space, line, space. You got to count each one as one starting with the first note. Okay, here we go. That's a line going up to a space, so I know that's going to be even going to be a sixth. And that's that. All right, number 12, write the indicated harmonic interval above the following notes. These are harmonic intervals. With seconds, you kind of got to squish those in there, right? So boom, because you can't write a second right on top because they would overlap. So you kind of kind of just sandwich it in there at the side. Okay, so sixth, we know that's going to be on a space because we start on a line. Boom, right there. Third, that's odd, so we know it's going to be on a space. Octave, that's even, so we know it's going to be on a line, F up to F. Okay. This one, we know it's going to be space to space because it's odd. Boom. This one, we know it's going to be line to line because it's 
odd, bam, right there. And then fourth, we know it's going to be space to line because it's even. So I'm spacing out here. There we go. All right. And the unison is just going to go side by side, just like that. Okay. So there you have it. And the circle of fifths go clockwise and ascend by fifths for the sharp keys. Okay. And counterclockwise and descend by fifths for the flat keys. Now remember, I like to go counterclockwise and, and ascend by fourths for the flat keys. You can do either one, whichever one you find easiest, um, whichever one makes most sense in your head. That's obviously the one you want to do. So that is the Unit 8 review. Hope this helps. Um, hope it helped you with any questions that you might have. If you have more questions, feel free to message me. Um, I could always do another video. Cheers.